this would be ideal. If we could do this, yeah. it would be totally ideal because yeah. everybody would pay less and get awesome results. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about DHI hair transplantation. I'm gonna give some thoughts. I went to the website because one of my followers wrote me on Instagram and said that he's about to get a DHI hair transplant. And he said some things about it that were kind of amazing sounding. So I wanted to research it, look over their website, and learn a little bit more about it. So today we're gonna to kind of try and find out if DHI is a revolutionary new technology in hair transplant or if it's snake oil. So, or somewhere it could be in between. <laughs> All right, so I'm here on the website for direct hair implantation or DHI. And one of the first things that I noticed that seemed to contradict itself a little bit was I was here looking at um, when DHI was started or it says, DHI, minimally invasive hair care since 1970. DHI Global Medical Group is a world leader in diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of hair loss. With more than 75 centers around the world, 50 years of experience, we have helped more than 250,000 men and women effectively deal with hair loss. Okay, cool. Then it says here on another part of the website, at the, uh, at the turn of the century, we were among the first to move forward from the harsh FUT strip and develop FUE transplantation. The following years, our relentless pursuit of improvement and gathered pace with our introduction of direct hair implementation, a technique that transforms the hopes and expectations of our patients. Well, which we'll get to that last line in just a minute. What kind of confused me a little bit is it says on the first page that they've been doing minimally invasive hair care since 1970. Is, is a strip procedure where they take a strip out of the back of your head, is that considered to be minimally invasive hair care? Not really, no. Yeah, I wouldn't say that that's minimally invasive hair care. So now it says here that they have been doing um, FUE, or they started this FUE and um, DHI, direct hair implementation, around the turn of the century, which to me would be around the year 2000. Right, that's correct. So what happened for the 30 years between 1970 and the year 2000? What were they doing? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea either. So they either were doing, they weren't doing FUE, it sounds like, because as they said that at the turn of the century, we're the first among to move forward from the harsh FUT st uh, strip. So th they moved forward from the harsh FUT strip. So I guess they were doing the harsh FUT strip or the harsh if you treat T strip for 30 years? Uh, the only guess, David, that I have to possibly put those numbers together is maybe they were doing the plugs. I mean, the plugs were the industry standard in the 70s and 80s. Okay. So if you go from what you call a plug, which by the way, FUE is a very modern day version of a plug. It's the okay. same, it's a punch. Okay. If we give them that, then basically what they may be saying is that they've never done the, you know, Follicular, uh, the follicular unit transplant. They've never done the strip procedure. That's what they're saying, which is true in a lot of places in Europe, by the way, but I know this is a global thing. Okay. So it's possible that they just did like the thick hair plugs for 30 years. De yes. And then decided just to- Jump into FUE, just stay with the punches. That, I mean, that's, that's the only way that that makes any sense. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, this just to me, yeah, it doesn't quite make sense. So <laughs> I'd love to know how these years match up. Um, I mean, and to me, the, the plugs, you know, the thick kind of plugs, non FUE plugs, that's a, that seems like just as harsh <laughs> as, as FUT as a strip. I mean, either pretty way, it's, pretty it, it's pretty invasive. So I don't know what the 30 years of non minimally invasive stuff was. Okay. So then we're going to go to over to, uh, some of the other, um, advertisement stuff, team quality control training and research. Our technology is our product. I think that's actually pretty true. That's what we're gonna get into. Okay, no, actually I wanna discuss this real quick here where it says direct hair implantation, a technique that transforms the hopes and expectations of our patients. This, this kind of bothers me a little bit because no matter what system is used for a hair transplant, no matter what technique is used to harvest the grafts, 
there isn't one besides FUE. I mean, there's advantage, definitely advantages to FUE style techniques, which this this obviously is, um, versus strip procedures. You know, there are, are, are definitely benefits, but I don't see how there's an FUE procedure that is going to transform the hope and expectations of patients. So if you've got an excellent, one of the world's top FUE surgeons doing FUE transplants, and then suddenly there's this DHI technique, I don't see anything about this from everything I've read on their sites that suddenly makes a person a candidate for an FUE hair transplant when they weren't before because now DHI exists. That's correct. It, that, it, I agree. That, that does not change the candidacy of the patient. Yeah. That's right. So really, if it doesn't change the candidacy of the patient, if they still had weak donor hair and were losing all their hair and no preventative treatments, they're still not a candidate whether DHI exists that, or not. That, right. And if they were a great hair transplant candidate, again, they probably already were whether there is DHI because they have good donor hair and they're not, you know, yeah, I think, David, the argument that DHI is making, from what I know, is that if you really don't know too much about what you're getting into as a patient, mm -hmm. that they're, gonna, they're basically selling you a technique that they feel if you have no real, op if you have no opportunity to have it done by a specialist, it's just, it's, it's kind of a commodity where you go into a clinic, you have no idea about the doctor, you haven't seen his results, you don't know if the tech team is full time, if they've been doing this that long. And then their technique is going to be a better technique in a from a commodity standpoint. That's mm -hmm. what they're selling, in my opinion, um, because I did hear, I've heard of them before. And basically what they do is they have a certain you know, technique where you're grab grabbing the graft from the back of the head and then automatically placing it, which eliminates a little bit of the handling of the tissue. Mm -hmm. So if, you don't know, if, if your staff doesn't know how to handle tissue, then that would be the better option. So that's kind mm -hmm. of the argument of that, that technique. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's kind of leading down to this next part of their website. Our technology is our product and it's critical because it puts us ahead of, of the competition. But it isn't and can't be the whole picture. We train our team so that they are the best placed, their best place to deliver the technology effectively with unparalleled service. We invest in research, relentlessly improve what we have to offer. They have the biggest and most experienced team of doctors and healthcare professionals specializing in the treatment of hair loss. One of the issues I have with a lot of specialists in the industry, not all the specialists, but some of them, they go from this mom and pop, amazing quality clinic where they're doing the work and they've got a, a VIP handpicked tech team where the least experienced staff member, maybe three and a half, four years, and the most experienced maybe 10 years or 12 years. And they're doing phenomenal work. And then what they're trying to do is monetize that. So you can't take it away from them. I mean, they're just trying to develop a bigger company, but they've got to hire more doctors, they've got to hire more staff, they've got to train them. So when you start to hear about the larger companies in the world that are massively, you know, duplicating the brand, what you're doing is you're taking it from the quality standpoint down to a quantity, up to a quantity standpoint. Mm -hmm. So you're going to dilute the talent. Yeah. You're going to dilute. I mean, I, I like to use the example sometimes of, I'm not a baseball fan, but some guys hit 50 home runs. You know, how many guys hit 50 home runs when they pay a guy $10 million to hit three home runs? Like, I want that guy hitting 50 home runs to be my doctor, if you yeah, can yeah, understand yeah. that, right? So how many of those guys hit 50 home runs? I want the doctor who's doing world-renowned surgery because I have limited donor to do my work, not someone that he's trained that's trained someone that's trained someone. But oh, by the way, the quality care of what they have is so good that it doesn't matter who it is. And that's the brand I think that they're trying to sell. Yeah. Well, it, it makes sense. If you're a surgeon and you're a world renowned surgeon, you only have so many hours in the day. So if you want to make more money, there's only really two options. Either you have to start steering away from your name as the brand, because you, yes. if, because then people are going to go, well, why isn't Dr. You know, uh, Steve Johnson, he's the famous surgeon. Why is he not doing my, <laughs> my surgery? And, uh, and then, you know, because he's busy already, right? So he either has to charge more money to make more money, charge more money per graft, or he has to start, you know, brand his name, best hair transplant surgery clinic, and then start training other people. And then suddenly there's, a, you know, 
10 different best hair transplant surgery clinics, all trained under the, you know, under Steve Johnson, using the brand new technology that he invented, special hole punch thing, and then he gets a cut of everything. Exactly, if you, if you keep this in mind, okay, this procedure for the most part is very easy to do. However, it's very challenging and very difficult to do it right. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about throwing out something like changing the brakes on your car, changing your tires on your car, why would you fly to another city to have the tires changed on your car? That makes no sense. Yeah. So the, the, the rubber industry has commoditized the tire industry. There's a discount tire in every street corner. Okay, that's what these type of companies are trying to do. They're trying to sell a franchise. And that kind of leads into here. We established the industry's first institution of practitioner education, the London Hair Restoration Training Academy. Since 2009, it has trained and certified more than 250 physicians and nurses to ensure safety and effectiveness. The academy works in partnership with discipline-related faculties of principal universities in Europe. Okay, so what they're saying here, I mean, this sounds great, awesome. They're, all of their surgeons and nurses are, are all trained, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, that's, that's the, that is the commodity that they're selling. I mean, they have to train them to do this thing, this DHI thing. So in, it says we established the industry's first institution. Well, it's not an institution for hair restoration as a whole of how to do, here's all of the different things that you can do to help someone who's losing their hair. It's an institution to train people to do the thing, the technique that they brand and have made money on, which is this DHI technique. My assumption is the majority of this time is spent on the DHI technique. Then they certified 250 physicians. physicians. So, I mean, you don't need to go to like any kind of specialist, right? Or like someone who's trained 10 years, all you need to do is just go to any one of these 250 physicians and nurses that have been trained to do DHI. Yes. And then you'll get the world's best results. That's right. The more that you bring it to my attention and I look at this, this reminds me of kind of like Botox, right? Now, you know, myself included, you know, like you look at Botox and it's really, you know, the, the, the biotech company that ma manufactures the product that makes all the money. But you have to be a licensed medical doctor, nurse practitioner, uh, doctor's associate, whatnot, with a license to inject. Nobody really searches out the ultimate you know, injector, of course, unless you live in Beverly Hills and you're like Housewives of Beverly Hills or something like that, then I'm sure you only want one injector. But pretty much, I think, for the, this audience and for us to talk about Botox, as long as it's being stuck in your face where you got a few wrinkles, Everything's good, everybody's good, and there's kind of yeah. a certain price you pay. That's what this kind of a company is trying to do. Yep, is make hair transplants Botox, yeah, exactly. basically. Yeah, so instead of, we're just looking at like, okay, so it's nine bucks per unit, well, if I can get it done for eight bucks per unit, yeah. you know? Well, I, I always had the idea, David, that I was, I was actually a fan of this. This is something that I actually wish was actually true. Yeah. Because the way I look at it is, you know, these things are pricey. These, these, these hair transplants are, are expensive. I mean, yeah. I'm a pretty frugal guy, but I know what you, you paid for your procedures, okay? Um, not cheap. Yeah. If we could do this, if we could actually do this in a way where we can duplicate this and streamline it and whatnot, and all those prices come down, and then it's not too good to be true, and everybody pays $2,500 or $3,000 for a procedure, what happens is you have three or four million procedures a year versus 1.5 million procedures for a year. So yeah, the doctors are working harder, but it's easy to train people and there's more action going through and you sell more lasers. And you, so it's a big money business. And, and it, this would be ideal. If we could do this, yeah. it would be totally ideal because yeah. everybody would pay less and get awesome results. Yeah, absolutely. And that would be great for me because less bald people in the world. We're going to go to here. This is actually prnnewswire.com. It's um, a press release. A hair restoration industry is growing at a rapid pace in India. According to figures available, the estimated market potential of the hair restoration industry is 30,000 rupees or crores or something. However, this growing industry in India has been dominated by individual doctors who perform these procedures using outdated technologies without standard protocol. So again, they're trying to get away from individual doctors. So if you're one of the top surgeons in India and you've been training for 20 years and you do amazing surgery, they don't want you to go to that guy. They want you to just go to go somebody who does DHIs, the 250 people that we trained. Go to, go to one of them. Any of the surgeons that have been doing it for 20 years, they're using outdated technologies, you know, without standard protocols like us where we train, you know, right. train all our people the exact same way. DHI was 
founded by K.P. Giotis in 1970, has been direct dedicated solely to the research, diagnosis, and treatment of hair and scalp disorders since 45 years. THI Techniques offer offers best and natural treatment to the hair loss sufferers around the globe. Again, the best, most natural. Okay, great. Um, it is a painless procedure that helps to restore the problems of baldness with consistent results. This always bothers me when people say painless procedure because it is impossible to have a painless procedure because you must be numbed up. I can give painless stitches to anybody. I will give pain. I could, I could seriously sew up your entire leg, Steve, and I guarantee it will be painless. 100% and I've never I've never done stitches in my life. But you know how I can guarantee that? Because I will numb your leg up beforehand with <laughs> lidocaine until you feel nothing in your leg. Now it's going to hurt like crazy when I stick you full of uh, stick you full of needles to numb you up, but I swear it will be painless when I stitch you. I've had hair transplants and I never felt anything during my hair transplant. Anyone who feels any pain during their actual hair transplant, that that doctor has screwed up because they haven't numbed the patient up, you know? Yeah. And so that's the exact same thing here. Of course, it's painless because they numb you, but it's not more painless than anything. All hair transplant surgeries, whether FUT or FUE, should be painless, especially during the actual procedure, but there will be pain if you count the numbing in the beginning. <laughs> so again, that's not something special, but it just sounds good. And it always bothers me because every place should say, we have a painless procedure besides numbing, <laughs> besides injections, you know? Yeah. The goal of this video, and hopefully it doesn't seem like it here by the end, is definitely not for us to bash DHI in any way because they probably get some excellent results. What kind of frustrates me is the people buying into all of these special techniques that claim to be better than every other technique. And we're gonna go over some other ones as well. There's the safe system, there's the smart system, there's the Dr. U graft. There's like, it's, I mean, there's literally countless, like almost every <laughs> FUE surgeon that I come across has some special trademarked name that they use and they say is a revolutionary technology that, that nobody else, you know, can do can compete with and it's just kind of gotten out of control all of these these titles <laughs> there can be excellent surgeries done with any of them what scares me a little bit is the people that call me and go oh man no I've, i found this one thing and this is better than anything else have you heard of the safe system you've heard of the smart system the dr ugraph the dhi have you heard of this? And then at that time, you know, some of them I have, some of them I haven't. And then I looked them up and I'm like, yeah, I mean, this sounds awesome, but it's, it also sounds like it's just kind of the same thing as everything else. Yeah. And if, uh, and sometimes the promises just go overboard to the point that it's just actually not true anymore. And that's where that's like a little unethical, I think. Lies to, uh, to get you in the door. Look for a great surgeon that has tons of experience and you'll be perfectly fine, no matter what technique they're using. <laughs> so that's really the bottom line. Hope this is helpful, guys.